three, two, one. Welcome to the first episode of the McCracken Post and Show. This is a podcast that I'm hosting. I'll be bringing on all different friends and family that I know for a little casual one-on-one style interview and just to hang out and talk. Really, really, it's just an excuse for me to talk with my friends. Uh, for you to talk. And here <laughs> is my roommate, Daniel Gabriel, about maybe 10 feet away from me. Yeah. A wall separating is the only thing. Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> but due to the nature, we still have to be on Zoom. And uh, in fact, I think the quarantine and the use of Zoom will be actually beneficial, beneficial because everyone is Zoom literate now. So it's easier than ever to everyone's host. equally lame on your podcast. Yes, everyone's equally lame. We can all host our virtual podcast and it's never been easier to do a virtual podcast. And uh, yeah. this is episode one. Uh, I'm burning Daniel. through my water already. Uh-huh. Let me go on. We just got finished watching a spectacular movie. Yeah. Adjective I told you. intended because it was about Spider-Man. It was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had seen the movie before. Yes, like four times. Four times. It was my it's first time seeing this movie. Yeah. It came out, what, a couple years ago? Yeah, like 2018, uh, I think. Won some awards, I imagine. Oscar. Oscar for uh, animation, I imagine, because yes. the animation, we just t- talked about that's the most memorable thing about it. The use of color. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Incredible. It felt like, I'm sure, a critic. I mean, when I say we just finished watching it, I mean, we finished watching it like maybe 10, 10 minutes, minutes ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, it felt like watching a, uh, I don't read comics, but it felt like watching a comic book come to life. Cause like it was so colorful and the art style was unlike any other movie I'd ever seen. Yeah, there's all sorts of shit they did with like animation and half yeah. tones and all sorts of technical yeah. shit. It's it's but Strange. it just looks great. It just looks great. That's what it, it is. It does look. It was just a, I was watching. I'm just like I was just falling in love. It's just a joy to witness because it's like sometimes when I think animated movies, I think like Disney or Pixar, and they're beautiful because of how realistic the animation was. Like Moana is like beautiful, has this beautiful water animation because it looks so realistic. It looks just like water. It looks like better than water. But <laughs> this movie, it doesn't look water like it's, it doesn't look like it's trying to be like real life. It looks like it's trying to be something crazier. And they just got so creative with it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, they went with it too because at the end they just they just go all rainbow and they got everything. Oh yeah, so much. There's, there will be spoilers, I imagine. But uh, oh, absolutely. If we're are you? Are you a Spider-Man fan? What's your history? Absolutely. With I love Spider-Man. Spider-Man. He's the best, dude. I don't know. I mean, I used to read comics when I was a kid, but it was just like the big ones. You could get the library that were just the, the sum total of all the ones. So I'm not a real comics guy. I don't, I don't know the lore, but I mean, how can also, you not love Spider-Man? Oh, yeah. The best, you know, he's got a quip. Mm-hmm. He's got like kind of weak sounding yeah, powers, but he always pulls through, you know? He's got the webs. Uh-huh. Got the cool suit. So know, you, you know, read like, comics like, as a kid. Did you know about Iron Man and like Captain America before the whole Marvel like the movies came out? Movies blew up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I don't know, honestly. When did the first Iron Man come out? Like two thousand eight, something yeah. like that. Like it was early, so I don't even know. I don't think I think the first one I remember like coming out when I was like remembering was like Thor, maybe Thor, Thor one, I think, and that must have been. So I feel like I don't even know if I was well. reading that much at like seven. So I, I don't know. I can't, I can't flex comics knowledge. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, superhero movies are like all the rage right now. And they have been for the past decade. And yeah, uh, I think petering out a little as bit. someone who's seen like almost every Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe movie and who has seen some DC ones, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse really stands out as like oh yeah totally different doesn't follow the formula that superhero movies typically follow really mm-hmm. yeah so different fantastic cast <laughs> yeah absolutely no everyone's yeah the whole thing's good it's just it's there's nothing it's hard to cr- you know critique it because everything's perfect in it honestly like i don't know if i change like i don't think i have the knowledge to change anything in that for the better yeah. uh, it's just no there's no there's no weak point exactly i uh 
I, it was not spoiled, spoiled for me. Uh, I knew it was like crazy and good, but like I didn't know that it was like crazy visually and good. Uh, I did not expect uh, Nicolas Cage as noir Spider-Man, mm-hmm. <laughs> who is in black yes. and white and amazing and funny. And Nicolas Cage is good in everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, the side characters are so good, even though they each have, like, what, three minutes of lines at max, like, each, <laughs> you know, they're barely in it, but, like, they're so good, and just, like, all the different personalities and everything, I don't know, it's just a good move, and they got, like, John Mulaney in there, I love John Mulaney, right, absolutely great, yeah, no, it's a good work, I mean, honestly, it's such a hard topic to talk about in your first podcast, you need to have something, like, awful to talk about, but this is just us just raving over it, because, you know, it's just such a good movie, <laughs> But we also got caught up on Tiger King recently. <laughs> if we want to talk about, oh, yeah, we talk about should... awful. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, honestly, the production's not bad. It's just the people on it. It's just it's like if you just wanted to film like garbage bags, it wouldn't be. Even if you had a 4K camera, it doesn't matter. You know, it's still it's not not the best watching. But no, they make it entertaining. Yeah. They make you like feel like they're good guys because they're like charming, and then like you're like, oh, they. <laughs> you know they have underage women working for them for like a hundred dollars a week yeah it's a whole thing (laughs) all day living in like barns like oh maybe these guys aren't really that cool and honestly they're not even they're not even cool from the start they're kind of like pickup (laughs) artists where you're like oh uh, i don't like i don't like this dude you know like that they'd wear like too much like denim that you don't trust i don't know how to explain it but they have when we were watching it i was definitely sensing some discomfort from you <laughs> just yeah no absolutely no i'm not i'm not good at watching stuff like that's why i hate horror movies because i get too into it so even like a documentary i'm like oh <laughs> you know i can't handle these guys i need to show you some horror movies because you no 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 i'm gonna brag on you a little bit you're a little bit of a movie connoisseur no no you're knowledgeable about them no i had a movie phase in high school that is a lot different from being a movie connoisseur. <laughs> you had a lot of phases in high school yes i had a in lot fact, of phases in this my whole life it's sort of an interview so can we go down oh, the God, line what? no no um, oh man not all of your phases but you have like gotten into things very sure. passionately yeah, for a no, short period definitely. of time like we'll talk about oh, yeah. like Oh, like you, you talked to me about once EDC, everyday carry, oh, about like yes. carrying objects <laughs> on you, like that are useful, like multi tools, no, like yeah, flashlights. No. And you That's were like, like most... do I have an e-? And yeah, you said, do absolutely. I have an EDC phase? Yeah. I was like, I did. Just one of many. Yeah, no, there's, and, and none of them were cool either. Like I thought they were cool at the time. Like I had a magic phase. I was like, oh, this is the shit. I'm gonna like <laughs> pull a card. And then I realized you had to like present it. It was more like, you know, it's about the pattern, like, talking to people and being charming. I was like, oh, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. This is just talking. So I just want to do the magic part. And then you had to like learn like physical skills. Like I was fine when you just had to like count cards and it did it all for you. But once you had to actually do stuff yourself, I was just like, okay, I'm out. And then I had like, well, I had the movie phase. I already talked about that one. Um, when I was like in middle school, I had like a paper airplane phase. Um, I had a chess phase at one point. I was like pretty good at chess. I had a chess phase. And then when they got to the point where you're like memorizing stuff, I was like, okay, I can't do this in my head. I'm, I'm not going anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I had a Rubik's Cube phase. I can still do one. Not that I fast. had a Rubik's Cube phase yes. as well. I think a lot of people had them. I don't know. They had like all those YouTube videos coming out. I was like, we're nerds is really what it sounds like. Rubik's Cube, chess. Losers, yeah. No. <laughs> Comic books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I never had any like weightlifting phase. That would have been nice, you know? Yeah. That's just how it you is. You can juggle was, too. You had a juggling I, well, phase. That's not that hard. Yeah, I did have a juggle. It's, I don't even know if you can call it a phase, dude. I just It's just a thing you learn and pick up. I don't even, eh, it's just embarrassing. A lot of stuff, you know. You know, I can ride a unicycle. You can? <laughs> really? Yeah, I can. I did not know that. It's also not that hard to learn. It's just hard to get started. It's probably the balance part. I thought about that. You know, I was like, oh, it's so portable. You put it in a backpack or something, but. I don't know if portability is really that important in transportation. Yeah, you know, it goes hand in hand with juggling. You could do both. I cannot do both. We combined, we could do both at the same time. That'd be pretty Mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. We could. I tried to learn how to juggle. Uh, I gave up after like four hours. And I watched a video of someone learning it in like an hour. So, four hours. I'm really. It took you four hours. And I couldn't do it after four hours. I don't know. I think it was. You're making me feel bad, man. I picked that shit up and like. I don't know, 20 minutes. Like that. <laughs> you do two in one hand and then you just have one in the other. And 
I don't know, man. It took me, I don't know, dude. I don't know what it was. Something about it. I feel like it's one of those things where you just like, it like hits you at one point. And you're like, oh, okay, I know how to do it. Like, I don't know, blowing a bubble with bubble gum. Like, I can't do that. I've tried. But like can't whistling. Whistle. Like, yeah, once you like actually make the first note, it's easy after that. So I feel like it's something like that where you just got to do it enough until it like clicks in your head. You got to get like those neurons firing or whatever science people would say neurons firing yeah bro neurons. and i i wish i could whistle because like when people whistle like this or like oh, i can't this, do that one i can just do the or like one. the loud whistle that's it's pretty cool no, i can just do vanilla whistling i can't do none of that <laughs> extra stuff i wish i could you know blow people's eardrums out with that yeah get get their attention really fast you know wolf whistle at people obviously no no that's the oh, worst yeah. application of whistling honestly you know i wouldn't be surprised if you said you had like a duck calling phase where you learned how to duck call I had a duct tape wallet phase. No. I was like into making those. They were really, they were really bad. And the, the bills would get stuck to them and the residue from the, cause I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't put any time into it. I'd put like maybe 30 minutes into it. I've been your roommate for a year now and I did not know you had a duct it's, tape wallet phase. I don't bring them all up. I mean, I'm not trying to lose too I mean, much it's respect. hard to bring up duct tape wallet in a conversation. Like, yeah, who talks about them? That's like 2012, 2012, <laughs> 2013 phase. I forgot they existed, mm-hmm. but you know. Yeah, no. Yeah, I tried to sign. I, I think what started was I was at some like craft store and they had to, like a, they were going to do like some sort of like class on making them. And I tried to sign up and they closed the class and I was sort of <laughs> and I was like, I'll just figure this out on my own. And no, such a, such a waste of Termination. Time. No, man. If I had spent all this, all the time I spent in these phases, I could have been, you know, really good at something. But, you know, that's but how it is. But now you're just like a jack of all trades, a jack of all like useless have a little fear. bit of knowledge and all these i could be a i could things. be a super good carny is what you're saying yeah I well could, you know i mean that's kind of where my alley is right carny or like a gamestop employee who's like extra quirky you know oh dude gamestop employee that's a whole different breed as someone who spent many days in the mall when i was a kid asking my dad to go to gamestop just never buying anything just to go look around at the games gamestop employees are uh I feel sorry for them. That's a rough place to work, I feel like. Yeah. No one's got any respect for you unless you know exactly <laughs> what they want. Everyone's got the most specific taste. No one's going I feel in like there everyone to get come- Wii Sports, right? Everyone's going yeah. in there to get, like, I don't know, Final Fantasy 12 or whatever. I don't even know how many there are. I'd be fired, you know? And I feel like That's everyone funny. that comes into GameStop knows more about video games than you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That'd be terrible. <laughs> Because at least when you're working at like an ice cream store or a sandwich store, you know the menu, you know what's on it. You're like no yeah, one's gonna come in and be in charge of you. You're the king of your castle. But GameStop, no, you're just like the fruit vendor outside the castle, and people throw yeah. stuff at you. You have to deal with gamers. Exactly. Awesome. Terrifying crowd. <laughs> All right, that's already enough to like just eliminate that. <laughs> that's what we need automation for, so people don't have to deal with gamers anymore. That's what Amazon's for. I mean, I feel like Amazon's just owning all these like small like really niche stores like that yeah well that's yeah i mean that's how big business does it right you don't want to yeah. get me into my... i don't want to i mean maybe i do want to get you started i mean i don't know you're probably gonna you be have on here content for me. but you're probably gonna you know, be on be here for many it? episodes so maybe there needs to be a big business episode where you just get all your political rants just get out. me mad yeah mm-hmm. yeah just give me mad reviews honestly it'd probably work no so, where does Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse rank? Because you are a movie connoisseur. I've seen all the Marvel movies, but that does not make me a, those are not, no, that's not you've cinema, seen like, but yeah. T- you had like a thing where you like one summer you wanted to watch, or one year. I did right? watch like, like 60, 70 movies in a year, but like. Yeah, that, I have like, like a whole list of movie like connoisseur. Like, I don't think. For that one year. I mean, I can tell you like what a, like the, the 180 rule and all this stuff of like cinema, but that's just like. Yeah, I've never even heard of that. Yeah, that just like means you don't cut in a certain way. I, I don't know. It's like, it's, I don't know. It's funny to bring up, but it's not enough to actually like mean anything. So it's just enough that like the average person is like, oh, wow, I just went with movies. And like a movie person would be like, you like Marvel movies? I don't know what an average movie person would be like. But, I mean, I as like... far as Marvel movies, I'd say the Spider-Man movie is way up there. I'd say it's like on top five at least. I mean, is it's it hard to Marvel compare to life. Though? Like, I mean, Sony did it, but I don't know. I consider it with that. Yeah. I guess if you're talking like Disney Marvel, obviously doesn't compare. If it's Sony Marvel, that's definitely the best one they have. 
you know, where they have X Men. What else is Sony Marvel? Just Spider Man movies, like Spider Man, X Men. Well, X Men, I think, was Fox or something. It is Fox. It's all a nightmare. It's all a nightmare. It is. And now Disney owns Fox. Now that, yeah, Disney's going to get them all back eventually because that's how Disney does it. And, uh, I've never even seen the first three Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire. I've seen like sn- snippets of them. I don't know if I've ever seen. I think I've seen like two all the way through, maybe and like three all the way through. But uh, I don't know. I saw Andrew Garfield's uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. I did see one of those. Yeah, with the one with the uh, Will Smith. No, no, no. With Jamie Fox is Electro. I remember that one. That one was weird. He had like the gap tooth, but then it got fixed or somehow like with the electricity. Did he get? Spider Man's got some strange villains, dude. Yeah, no, he has like the, but he has like one of the more. But they're cool. Villains. Him, they're cool. him and Batman, like, they get the, they get all the good villains. Everyone else kind of gets. Because you know they're not super people. super strong. Like Spider Man's not that strong. They gotta so be like, like smart a little bit. You yeah. gotta think. Like his, yeah. his villains aren't world ending villains. They're like kingpin. Yeah, which Robin, is a perfect box. Robin, that pizza movie. store villain. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, Batman's not. They're just like kind of mean people. They're not like super 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 heroes i mean like batman's got the weirdest ones i think you got the riddler some dude who's just writing clues i mean i guess yeah, people I, do that in real life though you know i think you got the, the older State the guy. superhero is the weirder it is because like back then like the 50s like come on like the I mean, some of them are just like straight up propaganda like the captain america ones and stuff <laughs> in the beginning i mean i'm all for fighting nazis and all that but then it gets into the cold war and it gets all complicated I mean, I love the concept of a dude just being frozen and coming back, but I don't even know if that was in the original or not. Because he was just like a normal comic guy in the 40s, 50s at the same time. So I guess, I don't know. If With a really back. lame outfit and like before. Oh, I don't know if it's lame. He's got, uh, the old, some of them are lame. I would agree, but. No, the like Captain America. I'm a sucker for like, some red, white, and blue, man. No, I don't know. but it's, it's like spandex. It's like, it's lame. Definitely. That's lame. every hero. You got spandex with everybody. Yeah, oh, well, mini superhero old costumes are lame. In the movies, when they make it more realistic, then it's really cool. But then, I don't know. I don't know about that either. I think there's like a middle ground where it's got to be a little a little kooky, but not like super, super out there. I, but I think I when they go that. too real, it gets depressing. When you give like Captain America, like all the all black and stuff, it's like, ah. Uh, no, fun. but in like the Winter Soldier, the second Captain America okay, movie, when yeah, he's got true. like, it's kind of like body armor. <laughs> Okay, yeah, cool. well, that's, yeah, okay, that's fair. But then when it goes too far, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, like the Batman, he's, the Batman movies sometimes go too far, I think. But at least he's like a helmet. dark hero. You want to, well, like in Batman v Superman, he's like killing people and he's all, he's all like, God, he, I don't know. He's a little bit too far. I think he's got to have a little bit of Bruce Wayne in it. Batman versus Superman. You could tear that movie apart. It's, it's no good. Well, yeah, everyone can, right? I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, even like Man of Steel was like a more solid movie. Man of Steel is not that good either. No, it's question. I remember when I was a kid and I watched it and I thought it was like the coolest thing. And my mom, like out of the theater, she's like, oh, that was not very good. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Superman was in that. He just punched that dude. He broke his neck. That shit was insane. I watched it again. I was like, oh, oh my man. goodness. How did I like this? <laughs> yeah, the ending is Awful. so It's so boring too. The, the whole movie, uh, he goes to the Arctic. What's he doing up there? You find the fort? Oh, oh yeah, the... Super has so much of solitude. Weird, yeah, and then like Kevin Cosner as his dad just walks into a tornado to save a dog or something. <laughs> that scene was so even, strange. He's, he's like, just, like looks back at him, just like, like don't knowingly. Save <laughs> don't save me with your godlike power. Like just let yeah, me. Yeah, he is like a god. That's suicide. That's literally suicide. His dad just commits suicide. I don't know, dude. If I lived in the world that Superman lives in, I would be on Team Lex Luthor and Team Batman, where it's like, listen, this guy could decide to kill us any time. Like, we got to watch out for this guy. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I can go down that route. Because, I mean, uh, that gets you in some dark ethical territory, I feel like. I don't maybe, know. I, like, maybe, but I feel like that 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 would be me. I'd, I'd be on Team Batman. Mm, yeah, it's just too one. much trust. It's just like Batman said, like, we, be- we become weak as a species if we rely on him for everything. Yeah, I don't know about relying on him for everything, but I don't know if you can like, take That's him out. Do. Well, I mean, yeah, but if you have someone who can save people that would otherwise die, I feel like you got to let them Dude. do stuff. You can't be like, oh, like no. Injustice? No, I'm a, not. A strange reference. And this storyline of Injustice, do you know what Injustice is? It's the, it's the fighting game where you play yeah. as heroes. The storyline of Injustice stuff. is basically like Superman gets tricked by the Joker and he becomes like the emperor of the world and like his like because he's just like, I will stop crying before it happens. I will, like, take out all the bad people. And, like, he becomes the emperor. And, like, 
Batman leads this like regime of rebels. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have, you know, I, I don't like, you know, giving people too much power in society, but that's what we would do. Stuff. He's like, you know, he's probably the best one out of them. He's the most, you know, stand up guy, even more than like Batman and stuff. So I don't know. I mean, we got lucky that it's him, right? And they got raised by some nice, God fearing folk in Kansas or whatever, <laughs> right? And, the most yeah, humble good old beginnings. American. Yeah, no. I mean, we got lucky with that, right, in that in that world. But yeah, you no. been to Kansas? Uh, I think I've probably been through there. I don't know if I've stayed there overnight, but I've definitely driven through at some point because, you know, I've been all over. Yeah. Please, can we talk about that? You have done this amazing trip that I have not gotten really many details of. Um, no, honestly, I don't really talk about it that much, even though it's exactly. I guess, and this pretty is the, foundational to me. I don't know. This is the perfect place to talk about it for the... I mean, all three right. listeners of this Just podcast. Recollect, recollect my memories Please. from being a 13 Give some background too before you get into it. Okay, you got to set this up. All right, well, I don't know. My dad was pretty big. He's a pretty big conservative. He's always wanted to get out of California. That's where I grew up, San Diego. Uh, he's always looking for an excuse. My mom, she loves California, but she loves new stuff. Um, I don't know. I think we had uh, like an acquaintance, family that I had done a year long trip to Hawaii or something like that. And they came back. My mom was like taken in by the idea. I don't know. My mom and dad, they like to like kind of be on the edge of stuff and like find like the, I don't know, the quirky way of doing things. Like my mom was into uh, Marie Kondo before she had the Netflix show. She likes like fixing things, but somehow the conversation of like getting an RV and like taking a year off came into play. I think we were, I think like we have like this whole story of like, oh, we were at like Del Mar Pizza and we were around the table and we talked about it. I don't know. I don't think it was that important of a conversation, but at some point we were like, all right, let's do it. You know, the kids are at a good age or whatever. I don't know why I'm talking from the perspective of my parents, but. And what age was this? I was turning 13 at the time. I think my brother would have turned 10 right around the start of the trip. So seventh grade and fourth grade. Um, ending those years. So then I would have, yeah. So, okay. So we bought the RV at some point. I don't remember any dates. I don't remember many of the details, um, but we got the RV. Fine. We decided to sell the house, sold the house. Um, you know, San Diego's pretty expensive area. So we got some money back on it. So that was kind of part of the move too. And then like when you're selling the house, I think my parents are kind of like, oh, oh my God, I don't know if we can buy something in San Diego again, because this is crazy out here. And I mean, they quit their jobs. Um, my dad's company was thinking they're going to get acquired. So it was like a win-win of like, I won't have to get my job taken. I can, you know, leave with honor or whatever. Um, so we got the RV. We made a plan for the trip. Honestly, my mom really carried us. My dad kind of just drove and drove wherever she told him to. But my mom did all the, you know, got all the places set up. Got to, you know, you, you, know, you got to get an RV park. You got to find stuff to do got to get a path around. So uh, she did all that, which I appreciate a lot more in hindsight because I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if my dad could have come up with any stuff like that. And obviously me and my brother couldn't have, cause I didn't know shit. Um, but yeah, so we uh, got the RV. I think it was end of seventh grade. So like, I think like end of June-ish, I could probably look up the exact date cause there's a blog with all this that I wrote, but. You were think, writing a blog at a yes. in eighth grade, really ahead of the curve. Well, it was just for the trip. It wasn't like a, it was really just to record the trip. I didn't have and anything. No, what was no, the blog called again? Dan's RV plans. <laughs> it's bad. I don't even go by Dan to anyone. Like everyone knows me as Daniel or <laughs> Dan to RV G or Danny. Honestly, like Dan is probably like the bottom of the list of nicknames people know me as. But I, I did like the rhyme. You know, it that's who rhyme. I was. That's the person I was. <laughs> you know, if I had had a blog a year earlier, we would have had records of all the things I was into that I look back on with chagrin chagrin's the right word there i don't even know and what yeah, spots so we, did you hit okay well we went up the coast of california we went la san francisco um let's see and then crescent city we went to oregon so we went to uh asheville or not Ash, ashland oregon went to portland oregon i mean we kind of went up did a little square route of the united states uh went to washington seattle Montana, Dakotas, we went through, uh, we went under kind of the Midwest areas like Wisconsin, Minnesota, that's probably the biggest area we missed. Like we didn't go to Chicago, that's probably the biggest like hub that we didn't visit. 
uh, went over to East Coast, New York, um, stayed with my grandma for a bit because she lived in Staten Island at the time for like a month. Went down to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Boston, that kind of area. Uh, when we were in Virginia, kind of, or I think it was Maryland, that's when I got diabetes uh, in the middle of the trip. So that was not fun, but you know, I, I don't think that kind of stuff's ever fun. So um, yeah, got diabetes in, I think it was Maryland when we realized, um, which is lucky because we had a, we had actually met with a friend of ours who had gotten diabetes like a year before. So they kind of knew the signs and everything. And we were like, there's no way, like what are the odds? But it happened. Um, so we drove down to North Carolina because we wanted to go there anyway to see, to check out the houses. And there's a good, you know, diabetes clinic at Wake Forest Baptist. So we went down, stayed there for a month or so, got used to, you know, injections, whatever. Uh, went down to Florida, Georgia, went across the bottom, went through Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Texas, you know, whole way through um, New Mexico, Arizona, back to California. And then I think that was around somewhere like in maybe March-ish, maybe February we were in California. How long was this trip? It was a whole year at the end of it because uh, we decided basically that we weren't going to go back to California. We were going to move into North Carolina somewhere. So we went back up. I think we went to Nevada and then like Utah, went kind of across the middle. Uh, yeah, so we did go to Kansas because I know we went to Kansas City, which I don't think is in Kansas officially. It's like split, but we definitely went through Kansas at some point. Oh, yeah. Went it's to, in like Missouri or something. Yeah, it's really stupid. I don't know why they did it that way. It's like right on the border, I think is why, but... But yeah, went there. I think we went to Nebraska at some point because I know my dad was from there. We wanted to visit. Um, yeah, so I went right back across the middle. So I've been most places at least driving through. Um, Did I you realize when you were in North Carolina that you wanted to move there? I mean, honestly, we were kind of, I mean, RV parks are never in like the good areas of town ever because it's all about getting real estate for cheap because you just put the utilities there. So we were kind of in the, you know, outskirts of town right up next to the highway. So, I mean, honestly, and honestly at that point I was too distracted with stuff going on to really think about like living a new place and all that. So I don't know, I couldn't say at the time, but yeah, I think when we moved in, it was a good fit. So, I mean, it turned out all right. Yeah, and then we ended up back in North Carolina at the end of the trip, uh, sold the RV, got an apartment, uh, stayed there for a bit and then ended up getting a house and, you know, settling in. And now we're kind of here in North Carolina or there in North Carolina now that I'm in Florida. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's the whole trip. I mean, there's like all sorts of crazy, weird stuff that happened, but yeah, I mean, that's a gist, right? Well, please. Oh, enlighten you? Okay. I mean, honestly, a lot of this is just like in the lore of the family. I don't know if I have like proof of it happening, but there's a lot of like weird stuff we went through. I mean, like just weird conversations we had that we still talk about. Um, like ghost sightings, like that kind of weird? You know, like supernatural? There's some, there's some sketchy RV parts we went to. Oh, like, like where, like, weird. so we went to one in... Um, on a Native American reservation in Washington. And we went to the wrong RV park by accident because I guess there are two in a nearby area. So we ended up in this like barely developed gravel RV park in the middle of the woods in Washington. And we decided to stay there, I guess, because I guess the people who invited, who we talked to at the gate were nice, but I think they're still developing it. So we ended up staying there. Some other family came in and stayed there too. And then I guess my, our parents talked at some point and they were like, oh, we only stayed there because we saw you here. And, you know, that's why we stayed there too. So I guess that was a uh, kind of a mutual, like, oh, okay, we can trust this place. But I, I don't think we could have. It was, it was a mixed bag. Um, some guy came in on a pickup truck, like in the middle of the, our first day there and asked if, if we'd seen any coyotes because he, he had like a gun. He was going to go hunt the coyotes, I guess. We were just like, okay, uh, no, we haven't seen any. Uh, have fun, you know. Let them out. I don't know. Um, They're everywhere, dude. Well, yeah, I guess it was a big issue for their RV park or whatever. I don't know. Our first half of our trip was kind of defined by places we could take our dog with us. Because at that point, he was pretty young, and we weren't sure if we could, like, leave him in the RV without him, like, pissing all over the place. But we learned to trust him, so we could actually go to places and leave him in the RV for a bit later in the trip. But in the first half, a lot of places were like, okay, is this place dog-friendly? What are we going to do with Ted? Where are we going to bring him? Um, yeah, I mean, 
I think we started to hit our groove right about when I got diabetes, which is kind of silly, but that's what threw a wrench and all thing. And we picked it up eventually. But I mean, there's so many places I got to visit that were just, you know, insane and places you'd visit on your on a trip of your own, right? Like Yosemite is just beautiful, Glacier National Park. Oh um, dude, that's all the that's places so cool. all of Utah honestly is just, you know, gorgeous. Um and then like being able to visit like a lot of cities that have like Philadelphia, Boston, kind of just getting a sense of that kind of stuff. Historical cities. Yeah. I mean, we've learned to all, because like my mom was trying to incorporate some sort of homeschooling into it. So she'd try and find like, oh, let's go to see the Liberty Bell. Like maybe that'll help you understand history. Like, no, it didn't. Really. Oh, that, but it's kind of cool to see. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting to see all these museums about like the, the specific stuff that like there's a whole museum just for the Liberty Bell where it's like, it's a 20 minute museum and they try and make it a lot longer than it is but it's nice to see it anyway so i don't know so i, don't know. I guess i have a good perspective on things but also it's kind of a 13 year old's perspective so i, I well, don't know that was my question is that when i was 13 first of all i didn't like museums second of all i didn't like history and third of all i wasn't super mature so i don't know if i went on that trip i would be able to appreciate it like i would now do you, yeah. you're a pretty mature guy and you like history and you like museums. Did you have like, even at that young age, like an appreciation for like that sort of thing? Yeah, no, I, I think, I think part of it, like getting diabetes really matured me a bit, which is kind of a weird thing to say, I guess, but it's true. I mean, that's how it is. Um, but I think like, mm -hmm. just like the reality of everything changing at once kind of matures you too, of like, you know, the things I'm used to aren't going to be here anymore. So even like the start of the trip probably matured me in a bit. And like, uh, I was kind of like in charge of like, you know, telling my dad where to go with the RV because, you know, old people are bad with GPS and following directions. And, you know, it was a little harder. We couldn't really do a U-turn with the RV because we were towing a car. So we had, if we were gonna get stuck somewhere, we'd have to unhook the car, move both of them, rehook it. So it was like a 20 minute thing. I think we had to do it three times in the trip, which is actually pretty good because yeah that turned out pretty well i think on our first day actually we had to do a u-turn but after that it was pretty smooth um i don't know there's this whole like rv subculture of like you know like people who move around in an rv who are like retired you have people who are young and just going on like a camping trip you have people who do it year round like we were you have people who are just renting an rv there's like a whole like cast system almost because there's like rvs that are in like the six figure range with like all the amenities granite countertops all this stuff so, yeah i mean they're nice I, I i don't know if i'd want one myself but i can understand the the appeal and then you got those people mixing with like people who are renting a cruise america rv or like just camping out at an rv rv park because you know there's a mix of people you got people who are camping in like their little pop-up tents you got people in the trailers you got people in class c rvs class b class a there's like literal classes and cost systems and everything but it's interesting and you know there's places that sometimes they have all the amenities like electricity sometimes you go, go off your generator it's just you know it's a big mix and i'm honestly very impressed in hindsight that my parents could like figure all that out because there's a lot of planning that goes into it that i did not understand at the time would you ever do it again yeah like either way if i could go back in time and change things i'd still do it and i think Someday when I'm like older, I'd probably want to do it with my kids, something like that. I think it'd be a good move. I don't know if I'd go for a whole year, but like for a summer, I think that'd be good. I don't think I'd want to like throw their whole lives into the whole switch kind of thing. But I think going around and seeing the world is a good thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad. I think it's definitely a good thing I went on it because, you know, there's a whole clean slate aspect of moving somewhere new. Plus, I kind of had a year in between to kind of think about who I was, even though 13 year old me wasn't that much less nerdy than I was before. But you know, because I think I think on the trip I got into like a hiking survival phase. So there's always a new thing I come up with, right? <laughs> I mean, it's only totally uh, natural if you're like running totally in an RV. Yeah, no, and then like you know, you go to all these cool military spots, and there's like Army Navy stores, and they got all this stuff, and you're like, oh, I want a big old knife, and you know, that I want an axe ass. and stuff. But no, I that that you know, I mean, who doesn't want a knife? Honestly, I mean, it, we're all just lying if we say we don't. But you got me a knife. Yeah, I know. For, uh, yeah. I mean, again, honestly, I haven't really given a up a late pieces, birthday you know? gift. Yeah. Well, spider cut with a beautiful knife. Yeah. I've already cut myself on it like three times. Oh, you cut yourself on it? Oh, you didn't tell me that. What are you even I... doing with your knife? What kind of packages have you been opening? I'll literally just like open it and close it on my desk. I think that's what it is. 
And, and sometimes it gets a little bit of glue on it in the packages or tape. So I'll just like take my finger and just like wipe it off. Uh, yeah, just I, I, you probably gotta get like some paper towels or something. Yeah, um, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was, at least how was high school for you after coming back from that trip? I don't know. It definitely went better than middle school, elementary school. I mean, I don't know. I'm not really the best like social person, but I, I had a good time in high school. And like, I, I don't know. I think most people have their horror stories, but I was lucky enough not really to have any like yeah. that. Um, I agree. I think that high school, I think just as you get older, your life just gets better. Like, that's why I tell my little brother who's going into high school. It's like, listen, high school's better than middle school. College is better than high school. And real life is better than college. I don't like, know about the last one. Maybe real life isn't better. Don't let anyone life. tell you otherwise. Don't peak too early. Life yeah, just gets I mean, better. Yeah. I mean, do the best you can, obviously. But yeah, I don't know. I think people who peak in high school are people who don't try and do better after that. And, you know, and I think that's just natural. I mean, yeah. high school, um, some people only get high school. So it makes sense to peak there because that's, you know, probably the most social time of your life. But uh, no, I had a good time in high school. I think it was, it wasn't too bad. I think that's, you know, the most you can ask for. But uh, <laughs> high school is what you make of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the hard thing I think is really just like, if you have a bad reputation at the start or you make a big like fuck up in the first year where it's like, oh, you're known for something. It's, it's that RV that. kid. Yeah, no, but I, I never, that's the thing. I never really tell people about it unless it's like someone I know like as a friend to, to a certain point where I think it'd be fun to bring it up. But like, otherwise I'm not going to bring it up usually because it's not that important. Like I know like the state's better than you, I guess, but like that doesn't matter <laughs> at all. And your flex. It's like, what, what's the flex? Like, oh, I've been- I've been to the Liberty like, Bell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I saw the Liberty Bell with my own eyes instead of like on Google. Like it's not that big of a difference. I think I've even seen it on Google. <laughs> I mean, you just, everyone kind of knows what it looks like. It, it does, it just looks like what it looks like, except for you get to know how big it is, which it's like fairly big. But like, other than that, that's about it. And I guess like when I see, um, what's the movie? Oh God, I hate myself for forgetting this. What's the one with Nick Cage where he steals the constitution? Oh, oh God, why am I forgetting this? Uh, I'm gonna look it up. Independence Day. <laughs> no, I, I thought that at first, but that's the one with the aliens. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've seen that movie. I think I've heard of it. Okay, well, that's our next one to watch. It's not as good as... No, oh, geez. Straight but from it's Into the Spider-Verse. National to, Treasure. Uh, National Treasure. National Treasure. Now, when I watch that movie, I'm like, oh, I know where they are because I've been, I guess I've been around like the uh, courthouse or the whatever it was where they... I See, I don't even know the name. So it's like... I've never I, seen the movie. I have a I mental don't... image of like downtown Philly. So I guess like now I can appreciate the chase scenes more in like that one specific movie. But like, I don't know. It's nice to be there, but I think it's something that like you can experience as an adult and it might be more useful. So I don't know. I mean, I'll be excited to take my kids on it because it's like I got to see it too. I mean, I'll probably have to deal with their shenanigans. And Would you go on a different route? I think so. I don't think I'd run and retrace my steps. There's a lot. I mean, like there's a lot of highlights you got to see at some point, you know, like the Grand Canyon. You got to see that at some point. And it's not like a ridiculous trip to make most of the time because Arizona is a hot Canyon. spot. Grand Canyon, you know, you got to see that or you got to see you know, Yosemite, you got to see Yosemite at some point, you know, there's places like that around America. I and mean, we're blessed with a lot of national stuff going on. I mean, even like the underrated, like the stuff you don't know about, like that you don't hear about, like there's a lot of like little forts along the coastline of like a lot of the rivers, a lot of, you know, the coastal states that are just really interesting to look at, you know, they got all this like giant stone earthworks and you're like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. You know, we've never been invaded, but Everyone liked to pretend that we would and built all this stuff and it's pretty cool. Postcard. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, everyone, yeah, there's a lot of postcard worthy stuff around America. Even like, yeah, the Appalachians, you know, they go all over the place, the Rockies, all these mountains. I mean, all of them are cool. Everything's pretty You've cool. been talking to me recently about wanting to uh, hike the uh, Appalachian Trail. Yeah. Appalachian Trail, the full one. How long is it? Uh, somewhere, I think it's, it's either 1,200. Or it's 2100. I know the one and two are in there and it's embarrassing. I don't know it, but it's a long way. Oh, range. don't worry. No one's uh, watching. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think it would be in the 2000 range. I think that's right because I think that's the right number. So it's in the 2000 range, early 2000s. Not too far of a drive. I don't know about that. That's still a long drive, too. <laughs> I mean, that's a few it's days. Even further walk. Yeah. Uh, how? Well, actually, it's How the same long distance. would you want to? Uh, <laughs> it's actually the same distance. I'm back. I imagine. Is it a? Would you want to split it up? I don't know. 
because that's that's the whole like dilemma right that people do like yeah. the, the partial ones where they'll do like three or four trips and do it or they'll do like tons of like week-long trips but for me i don't know i think the whole like doing it in one sitting kind of thing is really cool i think that's a cool thing oh, to doing do. it in one standing right yeah and you're yeah <laughs> one walking right uh, i don't I know if those are words that work there yeah in one trip i don't know i think it's kind of cool i think it's like the difference between like you know like a speed run where you do it all in one go versus like a one where you do all your best times and clip it together where it's like both are cool but it's kind of cool to like you know do it in one sitting and you know you're speaking to my heart yeah i know the greatest you know youtube video bit. of all time aha yes i forgot about that yes <laughs> i should i show it to all my whenever like you know you're a good friend of mac poston uh if he has shown you streets 112 I think maybe that should just be the intro. I think I should have a one it's minute true. and 12 second intro to every podcast. It's just streets one. Just watching it. Are you going to get copyrighted? That's a pretty popular video. Um, I don't know. Dude. I don't know. It's pretty I'll old though. I think you're okay. See if it, I'll flip it. <laughs> see if it's not it the works. same. It's not the same mirrored, bro. You got to watch the original. No, I don't. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I don't know. I definitely want to do in one sitting, but I think the hard thing about it is really just like dealing with like life during it and like, you know, when are you going to get a chance to take off three or four months from a job, right? Once you're oh, an adult, yeah, that kind of thing. So pandemic, that's when. Uh, even then, I think not, most people not even do, then usually yeah, canceled actually. it because I mean, there's a lot of people like it, and it's pretty unsafe to do it. So I think most people are planning to do it, cancel their trips and everything. So I don't know. I mean, I think I don't know if this pandemic is really going to go away, go away for a while. But I mean, and it's not like I'm going to do it for a while, but it's something to always keep on the back burner. I think. And you had a book that I saw when we first moved in last, uh, no, two semesters ago, where mm-hmm. uh, you had a book about ultralight. Uh, yes. Backpacking slash hiking. Yeah. Please show the book. Now, do you have any... I'll tell my editor to cut this part out. Uh, oh, whoop. Ultralight backpacking tips. Now, surely you wouldn't want to go ultra on the Appalachian Trail, would you? Or would you want to? I want to do that. It's about, it's a basically the idea of ultralight. It's just like everything that isn't food and water is supposed to be under 10 pounds. Kind of hype. So you can carry as much food and water as you want. I mean, within limits, right? But uh, I mean, like it, tr- anything that you're going to renew, you don't, it doesn't count for it. So it's the stuff that you carry all the time, like your sleeping bag and all that. I don't, know. I don't know if I could go all the way under 10, but I think it's a good thing to do just to like stay healthy. You don't have to carry 20 pounds every day. Are there any good trails around Florida? I think there's, well, okay. So there's, there's it's a Florida trail, which is all of Florida, like from the bottom, which is I-75 to the peninsula, which a lot of it is on like highways. <laughs> so that one's like a 1200 miles. That one's not really feasible. You know, at that point, it's already a huge trail. So that's a big, it's a big commitment. I think there's one that's like from the ocean to like Orlando, maybe. I think it's like Sea to Lake Trail, which I think is like 80 miles, which isn't, which is like a, a reasonable trip to do in a few days. Uh, I don't know many other ones, but I haven't really looked into it sadly. But you know, but both of our home states, North Carolina and Tennessee, have and Georgia too. And Georgia too, my other home state. Both of all three of them have great trails, so. Yeah, and they're all in the AT, too. I I have not gone hiking in a long time, but I think backpacking is a pretty cool thing. And we've talked about rucking, which mm-hmm. I have to practice by rucking, which to those who don't know, is just like a thing you have to practice for special forces, for the military, uh, and for, for like army, military. infantry, where you just put a backpack Very on stuff. that weighs anywhere between 35 to 60 pounds. You just walk for one to two hours at a certain pace. Like you need to kind of be booking it a little bit. I think maybe if we ever go backpacking, it could be rucking practice for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that sounds fun. I mean, yeah. walking. Yeah, that sounds fun in the woods. Just yeah. walking through the trails. Yeah, just absolutely. huffing it. Yeah. yeah, just hucking your stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's a, it's the simple joys, right? Stuff like that. Yeah. Walking around, riding a bike, listen to music. I don't, I don't know. Sometimes it's the simple stuff that gets underrated, I think. And I think hiking, walking is one of those. Yeah, absolutely. 
You know, you're like, I've always admired your appreciation for the little stuff. Okay. The simple joys in life. Yeah. Well, and I've tried enough of the weird joys like <laughs> stuff to know that they're not really that fun once you learn how to do it. I was about to say, <laughs> besides the magic and the EDC, EDC is actually pretty cool. In fact, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, like, it's not, I don't even know if this it's might hobby. be part of my EDC. Are these kind of knives, I'm sure they're illegal in Florida, right? To carry on here? They're legal. Yeah, they're legal. Are like, what are the rules for like other kind of knives, like fixed blades or? No idea. I think Florida, basically, it's like, if it's not concealed, you can kind of carry whatever you want, I think. But if it's concealed, it has to be like a reasonable blade. Like, I think yours is right under the limit, but it's like three and a half inches or something like that is like the blade length. Otherwise, it's like considered a weapon if it's concealed. I don't know. There's a whole concealed, keep... unconcealed thing. So it's like, if you just carry a sword in your bag, it's legal. But if you have like one of those folded up in your shoe, it might not. Imagine walking and thinking someone getting a sword in their back. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, you know, you can see people with guns on their hips, and that's way more deadlier than a sword. Way the right deadlier. Hands. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I think when I first saw one, like, some someone with concealed carry, like, my, when I worked in like an ice cream store, just walking in with pistols, I was like, oh my goodness, it's like a weird feeling of like, oh my goodness, like these people would literally just kill me, like instantly if they wanted to, which they don't, because they're in an ice cream store, and who's gonna like, you know, no one who's like actually bad is gonna go to an ice cream store. Or the more like, rolled ice cream store. Yeah, no, like, yeah, there's no John, there's no John Wick who goes there regularly or anything like that. It's a pretty soft establishment. Got a movie. Did you see the third one? I have not seen the third one. My parent, my dad read yeah, something about much. that because he's seen it. Is the third one mediocre? <sighs> not as good as the other ones? I don't love the first two. Like, they're good. I like them. Okay. I, mean, I like them. They're solid movies. They're, in fact, maybe maybe I do really like them. Maybe I really like them. But the third one, I'm just saying, like, it's pretty cheesy. It's pretty cheesy. Balls real quick. Uh, there mm-hmm. is a scene where they are in a like a museum for like knives, and they they get into a fight uh, where he's breaking open the glass and like throwing knives at them, the bad guys, uh, as John does. Cheesy. I will it's say just, that's a little cheesy. I agree. And then furthermore, he like builds like a, uh, it's like an antique store. So he finds like pieces for like a, like eighteen hundred revolver, <laughs> and oh, shoots them with it. That is and weird. The final scene of the movie, the final act, like the entire third act, is kind of maybe a mess in my opinion, but like, it's set in like this really nice like. Chinese hotel or some like really nice fancy location and everything's made of glass. Ah, so, like, like that kind of stuff, don't they? Uh, some of it's see-through and some of it's not. So like mm-hmm. some of it's mirrored. So it's kind of just like, oh, here comes the bad guy crashing out of this one plane of glass. Yeah, then it which, gets, yeah, it gets confusing to watch. That's and he disappears and then he, yeah. he will literally just disappear and then he comes out crashing out of another plane of glass and uh, that's the movie. And then he falls off of a three-story building and falls on, like, rafters on the way down and literally survives. I mean, three stories, that's possible. That's, I, I think if, I mean, if it's a skyscraper, I don't, I don't believe it. But three stories, that's practical. But still, he goes through, he, get, he gets very injured and does not really get, I don't know, yeah. dead, I guess. He's John he gets Wick. shot and stuff. He's he the stabbed. Baba Yaga. <laughs> he gets like run over the car. He's fine. He gets hit with cars. I mean, yeah, the first one was the most practical. After oh. a certain point, he just starts oh. making people disappear. Also, cheese balls. There's a scene when him and like seven other bad guys he's trying to kill, they're all on motorcycles with katanas. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> no. The second you bring motorcycles or katanas into an action movie, it gets, it gets a little shysty. I don't know. Those are that's a that's a tough one to do. I think action movies are the best when either they're super cheesy on purpose, or if they're really practical and down to earth. And yeah. the first movie was about being practical, so it's kind of hard to do a switch up in the middle. It really. And the is. first one's so brutal in terms of like, oh, this dude's dog just got killed. He got like beat to death almost. He's like angry. Everything's like desaturated. You know, there's like Russians. Like yeah, Russians. You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And then, you yeah, know, if you get like people spinning around and stuff and doing kicks and all that, nah. I don't know if it is for me or not, but 
It's I mean, rough to watch. You need to see it just to expose you. To I'll it. watch it. I'm down. I mean, yeah. I mean, I got to finish the trilogy at least because they're making a fourth. I mean, I think oh, they're really? pumping them out. Is it, yeah. Uh, Keanu Reeves is getting kind of old. I don't know how he's probably like in his fifties right now. Like I was watching the trailer for the new Bill and Ted movie. Definitely not going to see that. And it's like kind of sad to me. <laughs> like just seeing like old. I mean, maybe that's the joke. Just seeing like old. I mean, that's just, like, yeah, Bill I mean, that's Ted. just the nature of things. And I, I, I'm glad he's still doing stuff. You know, you see a lot of actors who are like young stars that don't really get stuff, but he's he's had good stuff since he's like in his teens. You know, and he had the Matrix. He had all sorts of stuff that's like, oh, uh, great movie. Yeah, great I mean. Movie. Yeah, so he's he's still been relevant most of the time, which I appreciate because there's not many people from the '90s, unless you're talking like Leo or like Brad Pitt or something like that. There's a lot of people who kind of fall into the yeah. Sam Jackson is always relevant. <laughs> always. I mean, he's what? Only, he's like in his '70s now. Almost. No, he's really old. He's yeah, from he's Chattanooga. Old. Do you know that? I did not know that. I don't know many Chattanooga facts. I will confess that. Oh, well, that makes two of us. <laughs> I don't know how many Chattanooga facts. Well, at least facts. at least I have an alibi. You do not. Moon pies, Moon pies, Samuel L. Jackson, the largest freshwater aquarium in the United States as of 10 years ago and maybe still today. <laughs> I'm not I sure. mean, I don't know how the freshwater aquarium business is booming or not. Yeah. So. Literally, you need to come to Chattanooga and visit this aquarium. I think it's so dope. Like, because how often do you see a freshwater aquarium? You get to see like. I didn't even know such a thing was around. No. Yeah, dude. And it's I mean, what did they keep in there? Just freshwater like, fish, snapping turtles, and and more snapping turtles, crocodiles, mermaids, freshwater mermaids. 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 <laughs> I don't even know there's such uh, a thing as freshwater mermaids. There's like all sorts of like. You ever seen the show uh, River Monsters? No, I have not. That sounds like a History Channel show. Is that a History Channel show? It's Discovery Channel. Sometimes. Discovery. Oh, uh, but same it's vein. basically just a guy just going to like different rivers around the world and pulling out these massive sturgeon or massive catfish like literally like 200 pound sturgeon uh and there's that in the chattanooga tennessee freshwater aquarium there's one of those okay i mean i'm down to see it i like aquariums i don't know i like museums i like aquariums like i like i'd rather go to an aquarium than a theme park honestly which it which really is well i'm I'm older than 13 so i would I mean, I don't know. I, I can understand why people would like theme parks. It's just not for me. That's just not. Oh uh, yeah, when you say theme park, sometimes I think of like. I'm talking like Six Flags. I'm talking uh, yeah. like. Dude, I love Six Flags. I when you said theme park, I was thinking just like. Carnivals or something. Little, what are you thinking? The wrong theme parks, but uh. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, for me, like I'd go to Universal. I'd go to Disney, absolutely. But like, as an adult, throwing down money on it, it's like okay, this got to be like a good plan. There's got to be like, you know, I don't know. You and I live in Orlando. We live together in Orlando. You're right there. Yeah. It'd be a crime if we didn't go to like. Yeah, Vegas. no, I'll go at some point. Obviously not now. Universal not for a bit. I'm not trying Disney, to go to yeah. Disney right now. That seems because you got either, you got all the fanatics and you got all the people who are just trying to make the most of a reservation they had that they couldn't cancel and are like desperately trying to squeeze like their money back, and everyone's wearing masks and like standing apart at Disney and it's people are bad at walking there anyway. I don't know. I don't yeah. see it being very fun right now, at least. I think it would be kind of like a dystopian kind of trip. And nobody wants that. Big time. Except for maybe like Teen Girls in 2013 when that was the uh, the rage. I think I've seen some friends on Instagram uh, at Disney. Don't want to call anyone out, especially because they're probably listening. But uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's just not for me. I can understand like why people like Disney and all that. But for me, it's just not, the, it's not my deal. And especially not when it's like you know, right now. Yeah. It has to be good circumstances. What is your deal? If you've got a lot of money for like a vacation to plan, I don't, you don't know. think I would, theme park, I would do probably want to go like somewhere that's like expensive to get the tickets like for the plane and then just like, I don't know, like Nepal or like Peru or something where it's oh, like I'm dude. throwing- Now you speak in my language. I'm Listen. throwing down for like a little bit of an adventure rather than like paying yes. for like tour guides. Yes. yes. Listen, you and I were talking about this. Our roommates- Save up some money from our refund. Peru, Morocco, either of those two. Ireland, we all I think Australia that. came up, right? Australia. I said Australia. Big... Jacob was down. Listen. Well, Jacob's always down, though. You know, you know how Jacob is. Yeah, he would like buy so many things in Australia. He'd get like... lost in the outback, and we'd like we'd have to like presume he's missing, but we know in our hearts that he's alive <laughs> out there. 
But then you'd be reported dead after five years. We'd be our cushy jobs. We'd be like, he's still alive. He's still out there. I know he's out there. Someday he'd return. Playing his guitar. Yeah, just like uh, has his own little cabin built out of like kangaroo bones or whatever they do out there in the outback. Strumming along. I no, but I'm it. not even joking. We that, we both think this should happen. Yeah. No, I think, yeah. I mean, I've seen enough of the U.S. I would be down to do a road trip across the U.S. I think that's a fun, like pretty affordable trip to do if you have some buddies, you know, drive around. But I do want to see other places too because I think my outside of U.S. knowledge is not as good as it is inside. Oh, man, I think the same goes for me. I mean, I've been to other places. Uh, boom. Yeah. My Poland flag would be right here, but uh, the command what strips. That? The command what strips that you loaned me. Okay, well, maybe it was they your failed. They were horribly yeah. defunct. My American flag would be right here, but uh, same deal. <laughs> okay, all right. It's always my command thing. strips. Uh, okay. No, yeah. I was going to say the command hooks weren't the problem, uh, but yeah, it was actually the command strips, so. Yeah, the hooks Listen, are rarely the problem. It's the strips. So I'm going, I actually have in my Amazon cart right now more stuff. But I'm worried, actually, that I'm not going to hang them up. But what's it? Peru? Ireland? If we went to Ireland, you could get your uh, dream of wearing uh, clothes that aren't T-shirts and shorts. Is it cold up there? Is it, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know enough about Ireland. It's honestly. colder, right? I just know it's cool. That's all I know. You got cool accents. I would... Uh, love an Irish accent. I would like pay a good amount of money to have a good one. No, I know you have like an all right do it. I think when you first I know you're said gonna that. Do it. No, I remember you just talking about this. Yeah, I know you're gonna bring it up, but. Uh, it was like the third night of us all being Yeah, and you went full Lucky like, Charms on us. <laughs> and you were like, I'd kill it to have an Irish accent. I could cut off a toe, honestly, like. That's what you said. Good, and good, I yes, accent. it's a very specific you know, thing that I would do to get one. So if anyone, you know has, why? If anyone wants a toe and has a good Irish accent and would like to teach me, you know why I have one? Because I'm mind. a major D and D nerd, and that fantasy accents you got to get a good repertoire. Yes, like the fantasy location of Ireland. Dude, this is fantasy equivalent to Ireland. I'm sure you can just make up a place where, the, yeah, that's the fun of D and D. You can just go to Ireland whenever you want. And yeah, you have to be Irish. Dude. So the Listen. Irish, or, 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 Irish. Or, or. No, please, no, please, let's <laughs> please start doing your Irish accent. <laughs> no, all I have is like a British accent. That one's pretty decent, but Irish, I don't even know where you go with that. You got to be like more sing songy, and I can't do that. Hey, where's me? <laughs> where's me? <laughs> like, I can't do it. It's just not right. I don't want to defile Lucky the Leprechaun like I am. I mean, right if, now. you can watch UFC and you can watch Conor McGregor when he was still around. Then it's I mean, does he talk much? I feel like he just beats up the other No, dude, he talks, talks all the, the time. Especially he talks, at the end. Like, he talks trash. So maybe watch interviews with them. Maybe. 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 Gotta practice. You gotta practice if we wanna go there because we have to be the asshole uh, no, tourist. We don't, <laughs> speak we in the don't. accent. No, we don't, though. We don't. <laughs> when I we just quietly observe, have our nice American accents. Yes. No, no, see, you are a quiet observer. I am not a quiet observer. And I think there'd be a it's lot a of like, you would watch me say something like, like, oh my here. God, Mac, no, please do not. When I went to Poland for uh, Habitat for Humanity, uh, we had a, like a Polish, like art organizer, like spoke both languages. So it was very important. And she like followed us everywhere. And she like led us to the stuff. And like, she was with us all the time. And, uh, her name was uh, Catalina, and okay. we had one guy in our group that he would speak normally, and then whenever he would say her name or talk to her, we don't even know if it was uh, subconscious or not, but he would always speak in like a broken Polish accent whenever he'd say like Catalina, he'd be like, Catalina. Oh, <laughs> whenever he would talk to her, like he would be normal an entire conversation, then speak to her in a Polish he's like accent. A, he's like a substitute teacher who does yeah. not know how to say no. those names in class. And it's just, the like, same energy. Same yeah. exact energy. Yeah. Those are, uh, if I was a substitute teacher, I would, I would nail it. I would, I would read the roster beforehand. I would have that shit down. Unless someone's name was uh, Irish. Well, I wouldn't do the accent. Like if you so. saw a McGinnis. What would their name be? Sky? Watch out. Would it be Sky or like, I'm not, like, I don't know if I'd even go for last names. Like, well, I don't even know any stereotypical Irish names to throw out there. You know, even though I'm like part Irish. McIntyre. There you go. McIntyre. Hi, McIntyre. McIntyre. I can say that. It's not like going to kill me. 
I'm capable of saying words. It's just like they wouldn't sound right to an, a native speaker. They'd be like, okay, you're kind of... And if we're 21 when we go, we can enjoy some of the nice... I don't even or think maybe you don't even have to be 21, no, right? No, absolutely be 18. Not. Yeah, or 16 or whatever it is there. Oh, dude. Whatever Imagine degenerate that. age Ireland has going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the point of going to Ireland, right? You know, that's what they're known for. Taverns, the IRA, uh, the cool flag. Great flag. I'm kind of a flag nerd. Green and They're orange? Kind of Throwing nice. orange on a flag is just flipping the whole ball game. I mean, I love it's it. power move. It is a power move. It's the whole, like, St. Patrick thing, I feel like. I don't know if I'm wrong on that, but green. I mean, He's definitely green. in there. St. Patrick's cool as hell. Like, the only, like the, one of the coolest saints. Dude just showed up. It's like, I literally yeah. know nothing about him. He was cool. His name is St. Patrick. Got I think thing. my next guess is his name is Patrick, so maybe he knows a little bit about him. I mean, you got to know the lore about your name, right? I mean, yeah, you really do. I like, know all the lore about on. Daniel or whatever from the Bible, you know. Homie is pretty chill, too. So I'm fine with Daniel as a name. You got to mm-hmm. know all the Latin. You got to know all the lore. Absolutely. You got to know the name. Most people Daniel. are named after something. You got to know what it is, right? Don't ask me <laughs> about McCracken. It's Irish, I think. Sounds cool. You know, that's the one right there. Sure. That's why it's that's the McCracken interesting. Boston show. And not yeah, Matt posted show. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. Sure, sure. You know, as, as I become an adult, more people are calling me McCracken and less Mac, and I'm a fan. Okay, I didn't know you preferred McCracken. I thought you were more oh, of a Mac fellow. I don't have any. You don't have preference. Necessary preference. It's just nice that people are calling me McCracken when I've been called Mac my entire life. It's like it's a, a nice change. Uh, of pace. An upgrade a little bit. Yeah, little my bit close friends call me Mac. Mm-hmm. You. Oh, well, thank you. Wow. Yeah. I don't have well, any cool nicknames, you know. I've never been a nickname guy. The only ones no, I had. you have a cool nickname. Well, D. Gabes. That many. It's Dan, Danny, or Daniel. That's all you got. And Dan, I had a barber named Dan as a kid. So that's always associated with him. Danny, Listen, I don't know. D. Gabes. That was fun. That was fun for a while. Wear D. Gabes shirt next podcast. All right, I'll have to like sit like this the whole time. And, so I'll, and also, I've said this before, I want a D. Gabe's t-shirt. Yeah, I, okay, I'll give you one at the, after the end of this. Okay. I'll, well, just remind me. You know what that means? It means... Next podcast, you'll be wearing one for the guest, and they'll be like, why are you wearing uh-huh. that shirt? I'm the guest. You should be wearing a Patrick shirt. What are you doing? And if they ask that, they, it also means they didn't watch the podcast. Oh, you can out them. It's a little hand All right. right there. Daniel? Mm-hmm. it's been good okay thank yeah, you for being my good. first guest on the podcast of and course. next time you guys see me and daniel we'll probably be in ireland what okay no no we're not doing that no i don't know about that why would okay we'll talk about this after